13 AP micro FRQ, obviously a monopoly question. Um, the graph illustrated below, the, oh, the graph below illustrates the demand, marginal revenue, marginal cost, average total cost curves, yada, yada, yada. Um, a, assume that the profit maxing monopolist is unregulated. Well, if you're unregulated, you are a profit maximizing monopolist. Using the labeling and the graph, identify each of the following, the monopolist quantity, the monopolist price, the profit earned, and the deadweight loss. So, obviously, to be profit maximizing, profit max is where marginal revenue equals marginal cost. Marginal revenue. Look at this strange thing the College Board this time did, right? They've got us a flat marginal cost and ATC curve. That's okay, because we know the formula. If you know the formula, you can make sense of these with no problems. Prices bounced off of this is not only the demand curve, it is your average revenue and your price curve. So we're going to go straight off and bounce off of the price curve. Our price is P3, and obviously our quantity we're producing is Q1. So Q1, P3, profits. Now, again, when your price is greater than your ATC, you are obviously making profits. And we can see that our price is here, and our average total cost is right there. So let's, get, let's clean this up just a little bit. Oops, I want to leave that part. That's your DARP. That's your Mr. Mr. DARP. Um, we can see that our profit is going to be this area here. Everything above the ATC, but within that amount of production. So this is all of our profits. Obviously, this is our price and this is our quantity. That's our total revenue. Our costs, we go straight up from the quantity we produce where we hit our ATC. That's going to show our total cost. This is our profits. And obviously, this whole area, that whole big rectangle there would be total revenue. Anytime total revenue is greater than total cost, you definitely have a profit. So, there we go. Uh, we would just say, what does it look like? P1, P3, A, and C. I think that's right. Our dead weight loss, right? We know the, this, we're allocative, where our price equals our marginal cost curve. That's allocative efficiency. When we're allocatively efficient, that is our social optimal quantity. That is the quantity society would like to have, is where allocative efficiency is. This is also where a perfectly competitive firm would produce. If we put a perfectly competitive firm right on the top here of this monopoly, uh, they would produce at that price and that quantity. What we know is monopolists always, their price is greater than their marginal cost, so their price is greater than their marginal cost. They always have a higher price and lower quantity unless they are forced to produce somewhere. So if this is our social optimal quantity, um, recognize that the, the further are we away from that social optimal quantity, the more dead weight loss we have. So dead weight loss is, let's just use a, be fancy and use a different color here, is this triangle right here, right? Obviously, this quantity is not being produced uh, by the monopolist, so that all gets counted as dead weight loss. Uh, and I guess we could do that, what, CAF? Can we say that? CAF, I think that'll work. Um, all right. B, now assume the monopolist can perfectly price discriminate. The old price discriminating monopolist. Let's get rid of this so we can make sense of it. Um, understand that when a monopolist price discriminates, he can charge the highest price for every unit of good that he sells. So he'll charge that price for that unit. He'll charge that price for that unit. And the last unit he'll sell would be this unit right there. The reason I know that is because when you can charge a different price for every unit, the highest price that you, for every unit that they sell, they can charge the highest price. What that implies is that we don't have a different marginal revenue curve from our demand curve. This disappears, and this becomes Mr. DARP. 
this becomes your Mr. DARP curve or your marginal revenue demand and average revenue and price. And if this is the only curve we have, well, where marginal revenue and marginal cost come together, right there, that's the quantity, that the last quantity that we would produce. So that would be the last price they would charge, that price, and they would sell that quantity. I hope that makes sense. So understand that anytime you see a price discriminating monopolist, just understand that the demand curves becomes the Mr. Dart because they can charge that highest price for every unit. Um, their marginal revenue demand become the same thing, and it's a downward sloping Mr. Darp curve. So the quantity produced, the last quantity produced, would be Q3. The total revenue, a bit tricky here unless you've done it, understand that total revenue is price times quantity. So if all of these units that if I was producing, just imagine I was producing these other units here, every price for a different unit, right? So all of these prices, all of these quantities, price times quantity is total revenue. So this whole, uh, let's see if we can make it, let's use something different here. All of this area would be total revenue. That price, that quantity, that price, that quantity, that price, that quantity. So all of this has to be total revenue. I hope that makes sense. Uh, we would say what, zero P4, what is that, F Q3, something like that? I think that's right. Uh, C, instead, assume the monopolist charges, well, didn't they just flip it around on us? Nicely done. Um, let's get rid of all this. And I'm going to get rid of that, too, just to clean it up a bit. Um, okay. And I can't stand that color for very long. Now, assume the monopolist charges a single price, profit maximizing, and is regulated to produce the socially efficient quantity. Okay, so they're being regulated to produce a socially efficient quantity. That is the same thing as saying the social optimal quantity or efficient quantity is the allocative efficient quantity where price equals marginal cost. Allocatively efficient is where price equals marginal cost, that quantity, and that price, P1. The quantity would be, looks like Q3. Recognize what are, what would happen to our um, consumer surplus here. Our consumer surplus is everything above the price. Oh, I hate that color. Everything above the price, everything below the demand curve. So just to understand that, I can't use that very long. That consumer surplus is everything above the price, but below demand. So we can see that all of this area would be consumer surplus. And I think we just describe it as what P1, P4, F. I think that'll work. It's just that triangle. They're not asking, make sure they're not asking you to calculate. Um, well, obviously, we don't have any numbers here, so that couldn't work. D, is the monopolist facing the regulation in Part C earning a positive economic profit, zero economic profit, per loss, etc. explain? So let's look at it for a second. Again, we know they're producing at that price and that quantity. And this is their ATC also. So if your price equals your ATC, and it does right there, where we're producing at, then we are at break even. When you are at break even, when your price equals your ATC, you are making zero economic profit. You are also making what we call a normal profit. We need to know both of those. So they are earning zero economic profit, and we would just explain that where they are producing where their price equals the ATC. Um, e is point F in the elastic, inelastic, or unilastic portion of the demand curve. There's an easy way and there's a hard way to answer this. We are always going to answer it the easy way. We know, or we should be able to know, that the, um, oops, let me do that. Let's 
let's get back to a black. Uh, at that price and that quantity, we should know that where marginal revenue equals zero, this is what we call max revenue. If you find max revenue where marginal revenue is zero and you go straight up from there, where you hit the demand curve, that is the unit elastic point on your demand curve. Everything below is inelastic. Everything on the demand curve above is elastic. Now, understand, look at your marginal revenue curve here, right? If you're producing in the inelastic section, what's happening to your marginal revenue? Marginal revenue is negative, right? Meaning that your total revenue is going down. So the more quantity of goods you produce, the more money you're losing. So no monopolist ever wants to produce in the inelastic section unless he's forced to. Uh, here they are producing... At F, they are in the inelastic section, but they are at break-even. So we would just answer this, that it is, they are in the inelastic section. The easiest way to explain that is just to say marginal revenue is negative. That's a very quick answer to get all the points for explaining why they are not either not producing in the inelastic section or obviously in this instance why it's inelastic. Obviously, if you were producing at profit max here, your price and quantity would have been right there. You would have been producing in the elastic section and recognize that a good explanation of why the monopolist always wants to produce in the elastic section, you could just say marginal revenue is positive. This is very helpful for answering these questions when you see them in a very tight way so you don't have to write too much. All right, guys, be safe. Take care. Bye.